Now, for those of you familiar with the black Hebrew Israelites, they reference Deuteronomy 28:68 to the transatlantic slave trade. And as you just heard in this song, he said it speaks of it in the text. So let's go see what the text says. Now, Deuteronomy 28:68 says this, and the Lord will take you back to Egypt in ships by the way which I said to you, you shall never see it again. And there you shall be offered for sale to your enemies as male and female slaves, but no one will buy you. A few things to notice with the structure of this text. Notice that the Bible doesn't simply say God will take you into Egypt, but God will take you back to Egypt. That's the first hint. The second hint, by the way of which I said to you, you shall never see it again. Based on these two clues and exegesis, we can conclude that this is literal Egypt because they came out of a literal Egypt and God said he will take them back to Egypt. He can only take them back if they've been there before. Next, the Bible says, by the way of which I said to you, you shall never see it again meaning that they saw it before. This can't be America's black Hebrew Israelites claim because the Jews were never delivered out of America under Pharaoh's hand to be taken back to America. Jews at that time have never seen America to see America again. This is further solidified when you go to the word that's used for Egypt right here in this passage. It's literal Egypt in link to the son of Ham. And notice it's a country in Africa. So based on the wording of the text, God is literally saying that he will take them back to the part of Africa in which they came because that's where they were in bondage in. So now that we concluded that this is speaking of literal Egypt and literal Africa, that they were taken out of before only to be taken back, that they have seen before only to see again, and how this exegesis displays its literal. I know some people are going to say, well, Egypt means bondage spiritually. And I agree, Egypt can symbolize bondage, but here's the thing about that. This text and the structure of it cries literal Egypt. Now, there is a scripture that speaks of spiritual Egypt, and that's found right here in the book of Revelation. But that's during the tribulation, and it's about Jerusalem. But notice this. The time that Egypt is offered as spiritual symbolism, the Bible is direct, and it tells you that Egypt is spiritual symbolism. So Deuteronomy is literal Egypt, which isn't in America. So biblically, it cannot represent the transatlantic slave trade. This is further solidified when, when you see in history that after the fall of Judea, some Jews were sold as slaves or transported as captives. And you can see North Africa is mentioned. Some portions of Jewish history also notate them going by the way of ships. And I know some will say, but yeah, look, it lists a nation like an eagle. That has to be America. No, my friends, Rome has an eagle. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem. Recha Ha Kwadash and double honors to the elder apostles and even the elder bishops of Great Millstone. Honors a sincere honors a salute to you, brethren, even you so few sisters. And shalom to the hopeful elect. Shalom to the elect. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm going back on this video with this guy who says Deuteronomy twenty eight sixty eight has nothing to do with America that's what he's saying he's saying it totally means <clears throat> the original Egypt first of all you would have to be a spiritual man to even understand scriptures even scholars on different levels never get the same commentary although some of them are on point with some things but they never have the same commentary you think when they wrote that uh, or when they did the, the um, research or when they did the translations that they they even translated that that book in different translations but you think they would have said wait a minute that couldn't be talking about the original Egypt Egypt that has to be talking about a country far off and you really think that they were really want us to know at that time that we were those people although people already knew there were some people that knew we were the real biblical Hebrews you know Jews so anyway you know these guys we see these guys pop up and um, they want to be heathens they don't want to accept the fact of who we are this is that, this is that self hatred where you don't want to be anything greater you just want to be a heathen under the foot of you know the people who's been taking care of you but anyway the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships so we're going to go into that, strictly on that. Lord will bring you into Egypt again with ships. So that word is, that word goes to, which we know, that word goes to Mizraim. 
uh, let me let me just make sure I got it. And the Lord shall bring it to Egypt. Okay, Mizraim, age forty-seven, fourteen. It means land of land of cops, right? Um, which goes back to bondage, a country. Well, let me look that up again. Basically, it just means the land of Egypt, of uh, the of uh, that hemisphere, right? It says a country. Uh, at the northeastern section of Africa adjacent to Palestine. So whenever you get a, when you're dealing with this language, whenever you get a, a word that may mean something, this is why they'll put a one and then an A. And then they got a number two, which means Egypt, Egypt, Egyptian means double straights. So you have, right now we have three different definitions for the word Egypt, right? Lord's will, we'll get into what he said in Revelations 11 and 8. It says an inhabitant of native e Egypt. So Egypt was not the original name. That that was uh, the original name was Mizraim, and you have here e uh, Egyptos or Greek uh, Egypt. I believe it's another terminology for it. I just can't think it off the top of my head. When you scroll down, it says the proper name of a territory and people. Right. A proper name or territory or people. But when you go to Mizraim, when you scroll down, it says dual force 4693. It says Matsua. Strong's H 4693. Matsua. Matsua. Which means a name for Egypt. A siege and entrenchment. An entrenchment. So here we see here. A name for Egypt. So, this name was put on Egypt, as uh, as we should know, the Greeks conquered the, conquered uh, Mizraim. Martsor. It means when you go further into it, it's another definition for Martsor. Means seeds enclosure and entrenchment siege. And in uh, enclosure, siege works rampant. So you can even say on the siege of 70 AD, that was like Egypt, right? A siege. You know, you stop food, import, export, coming in, coming out, going out. This would be like Egypt all over again. Matsor 6696. This is another translation. It's just going all the way down. I don't know what it's going to say. It says a besiege, a cramp, a shut in, a besiege to show hostility. This is all coming from the word Egypt. This is all coming from the word Egypt. So we can see that Egypt is a condition. It was also known as a place. But the reason why, because of the Greek translation, it became Egypt. But it's actually Mizraim. But the land of Mizraim. But during the conquer conquest or conquering, it was changed to the name into Greek name. You had the Septuagint as well. It was a Greek name which just meant bondage. So any place can be named a form of bondage. You could actually call it Egypt. Any place right now that's going through a form of a siege or straits, you can even call it Egypt, right? Because that's what we're showing you what it is. Um, let's go to, let's go to, um, we're going to um, shoot on over to Revelation. I just wanted to get that point. Let's go to Exodus. Let's go to Exodus 20. I believe it's Exodus 20 and 1. And let's see what it let's see what it says there in Exodus twenty one. I can almost quote that. I am the Lord, I am the Lord your your power, which have brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. The house of bondage, right? So you were brought out of the house of bondage. So any any time like this place we are in now, this is also a house of bondage. Let's go to Isaiah 19.25. 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 Isaiah
It says, whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, blessed be Egypt, my people. So we know Egypt wasn't the Lord's people. So why is he saying, bless my, my people, Egypt? When you read the original translation, it says, bless my people in Egypt or of Egypt. The original translation said, bless my people of Egypt. You know, so you had our people who would practice Egyptian philosophy who wanted to go back to Egypt. And that was even called Egyptians. Right? Um, was it Moses' son named Gershom, which means stranger. So we would have our people, just like you have people call themselves America today. Right? So that terminology doesn't strictly mean, it can mean the country Egypt, the land Egypt, let me say that, and it can mean another place that symbolizes Egypt. We'll see that here in um, we'll see that here in Romans, I mean Revelation. Let's go to Revelation eleven. Let's see if we can find it somewhere over here. We can go to uh, let's go to Revelation eleven. Le Re yeah, Revelation 11, verse 8. It says, And their dead bodies shall be, uh, shall lie in the street of that great city, which is spiritually called, it says right here, spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Also, um, where also our Lord was crucified. So you can see here Egypt, he's there, it is, it is saying spiritually. So let's look up the definition of this word Egypt. Right? It says, it says Egyptos, G125. And it says Egypt, double straight, so it can mean that. A company occupying Africa. It says metaphorically Jerusalem for the Jews persecuted. Right? persecuted the Christ and the followers and so uh, to be likened to the Egyptians treating the Jews okay so let's go here to Isaiah 40 which we what you need to understand is Deuteronomy 28 64 says the Lord will scatter thee from one end of the earth even into the other so this guy is saying it's strictly Jerusalem Right, but where did most of the slaves come, and where were they hung, and why were their crosses burnt in their yards? Right, and when you look at what happened to Yahawasha, the one you call Jesus, then who was a Judite, a Jew? What happened to the the people, the people that got lynched and burned at the stake? What were they? They were lynched as well. They was, you know, persecuted. So there's a lot of similarities between the people that were brought here and the one you call Jesus that was lynched, Yahawashah. Anyway, it says, Comfort ye, comfort ye my people. Say of, say of God, speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished. So we could clearly see that Jerusalem was a people. It says, O Zion, the, uh, that bring us good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain, O Jerusalem. So the worst thing, I mean, it was the best thing for them at that time, but now that the truth is coming out, it's showing that the true biblical Israelites that was scattered, it's, it's all making sense now, what happened to those tribes of Israel? Who were they? And what happened to their identity that was stolen? And you got guys like this will help try to keep the lie going. So when you see what it says here for a metaphor, Jerusalem for the Jews persecuted, persecuting the Christ and his followers, right? 
and so to be likened to the Egyptians treating the Jews. So when you really look at it, uh, when you really look at it, Jerusalem is a people right now before a place. Because you can't sit up there and say one tribe is bundled up into one place in a hole, right? And haven't fit any of those prophecies. We can see that here in America. That's just not adding up, man. And at that time with the, um, the, uh, uh, the Israel, I mean, the, um, you should be brought into Egypt again with ships. At that time, as I said before, there was Egypt was always known for trying to make trade great, import, export. But you didn't need ships at that particular, in that particular region, at that particular time. They got to show us that on the map because it was so close. Anyway, that's all I have on that. Shalom.